The M2 Bradley IFV is the main infantry fighting vehicle of the US Army. While its production started in 1980, it's been upgraded and kept still very relevant on today's battlefields. While the Bradley has gotten a lot of room in the media recently, another fighting vehicle was also mentioned, the Swedish-made CV-90. Being over a decade newer design, how does it compare to Bradley? And which vehicle is better for the European war theater? Recently, Binkov has decided to expand his knowledge on all things history and warfare related. And what better place for that than Wondrium, sponsoring this video. Wondrium is a streaming platform offering a vast collection of curated short and long-form videos featuring various experts on the matter. There probably wouldn't be a Binkov's channel if I didn't love learning about new things. And Wondrium's documentaries make it quite easy to delve into various subject matters. Watching the War in the Modern World series, I was surprised to learn of the North Vietnam's failed urban offensive of 1951, for example. But I won't be stopping at military topics alone. Wondrium's library is constantly being updated with new courses. I can brush up on my cooking knowledge as well. And for inner peace, I may try out yoga. The best thing is I can download it and listen to it anywhere. And all the videos are ad-free. So wait no more. Wondrium.com slash Binkov's Battlegrounds. Click the link in the description box and start your free trial today. Back to our video. CV-90 is shortened for Combat Vehicle 90, which comes from Stridsforden 90, which in Swedish means Combat Vehicle, who would have figured. Designed in the 1980s and starting production a dozen years after the Bradley, the CV-90 ultimately became a post-Cold War design. While there are many sub-variants to it, more so than with the US Bradley, we'll focus on comparing just a few. The Swedish Army CV-9040B pitted against the US Army M2A2 ODS from the 1990s. After that, we'll compare the latest variants, the US Army M2A4 and the recently modernized Dutch CV-9035NL based on the Mark IV international platform. Though that comparison will be limited due to less data available. The US M2A2 ODS variant was fielded a quarter of a century ago. Just a few years later, Sweden fielded the 9040B variant. The Swedish vehicle is lighter, at just 23 metric tons. The ODS Bradley weighs almost 28 tons. That mostly stems from the fact that the Bradley is a slightly larger vehicle in almost all dimensions. Though the more modern construction and design might have helped the CV-90 shed a bit of weight as well. CV-90 presents a somewhat smaller target. Protection-wise, Bradley's armor offers all-around protection against 14.5mm gun rounds. But Bradleys often come up armored. Those additional armor modules use reactive armor plates, which are especially useful against RPGs. Still, when added, the overall protection level of Bradley goes up, protecting against 30mm rounds as well, at places where modules are installed which are sides of the vehicle, the upper glasses of the vehicle, and select few parts of the turret, where there was enough room to mount said modules. However, with the added armor, Bradley's weight goes up to over 30 tons. 9040B's armor seems to be marginally better than that of the baseline Bradley's, though there aren't really good sources out there on that particular aspect of the Swedish vehicle. Its armor is fairly thin and a good deal of frontal protection seems to come from the very sloped frontal plates. It appears the all-around protection against 14.5mm guns was also the requirement for the CV-90, with the upper glasses of the vehicle being able to withstand somewhat larger rounds of around 23mm. Unlike the Bradley though, CV-9040B in Swedish service does not seem to be using additional armor meaning its side protection may be noticeably worse than that of the Bradley, and even frontal protection is lagging behind somewhat. Main armament on the CV-9040 is a 40mm gun. It was an unusually large caliber for the 1990s, and part of the reason Sweden chose it may be because they had so many such guns laying around, as it was used in many other systems and cost-efficient to maintain. Of course, a big reason is also its potency against armored targets. In the 1960s tests, 
using subcaliber armored piercing round, it was credited with penetrating at least 120 mm of steel. Today, actual results using fin stabilized subcaliber arrows are classified, but trying to extrapolate from other round penetration values, the latest armor piercing round should be able to go through almost double the value of steel of the Bradley's latest 25mm AP round. For example, even T72 tanks, when maneuvering and partially exposing their sides, might get penetrated if their hull sides are hit. Some users may not get such advanced rounds, of course. If the previous generation of AP rounds are used, like the M791 for the Bradley or the Pill 90 for the CV9040, results will be somewhat worse. Reason why the Bradley's round is that much worse is because it didn't really get any new high-tech rounds post mid-1990s. As the Bradley's gun is smaller, it can fit 300 rounds ready to fire, plus another 600 rounds stored in the vehicle. CV9040 has a two-tier ready-to-fire system where only 24 rounds are really ready to fire in magazines and another 48 are available in a rotating carousel for quick reload of the magazines. Then further 162 rounds are stored in the vehicle. Bradley obviously carries many more rounds, which is understandable when you know its 25mm anti-tank rounds weigh less than half a kilo, compared to 40mm ones, weighing 5 times more. Despite the size, the Swedish Bofors gun has a quicker firing rate than the Bushmaster gun, stemming from its original anti-aircraft gun roots. Due to the bigger and heavier gun and the bigger and heavier turret, CV9040 suffers when it comes to traverse rate of the gun. It also can't elevate its barrel as high up. In practice, that means that it will be able to engage drones overhead a bit less often and that it will not be able to engage nearby high-rise buildings as well as the Bradley. Interestingly, the large caliber allows the CV9040 to use some advanced capability munitions. While the Bradley has just the high explosive and armor piercing rounds at its disposal, the 9040 has one more class of rounds. It uses projectiles with pre made steel balls and programmable fuses. Basically, the vehicle uses a rangefinder to set the range of the target, then sets the fuse for each round for various situations. Fuses timed to detonate over trenches are a common situation, for example. Older rounds with a simpler proximity fuse are also available, more optimized against air targets. Interestingly, while Sweden has opted for such a large caliber main gun, other users of the CV90 have gone with smaller guns, usually 30 or 35 mm ones. But we digress. Both Bradley and CV90 have secondary 7.62mm machine guns coaxial to the main gun. But despite being outgunned, Bradley does have better chances against tanks. It carries anti-tank guided missiles. It has a twin ATGM missile launcher packing tow two missiles, which can penetrate pretty much all today's tanks even from the front. Tow missiles come in various versions and the Arrow 2B variant is probably the best version out there. It increases the range of the already capable 2B while adding a top-down attack mode, which, if the missile's final approach is unobstructed, will likely result in neutralization of any tank. The Bradley usually carries five more tow missiles inside the vehicle, and the missiles have to be reloaded manually. A soldier partially exposes themselves doing that, using a hatch, and the turret has to remain fixed all the while. Swedish CV-90 does not have any ATGMs. Firepower without means to direct it is, however, meaningless. Sadly, no detailed comparison can be made, as information on CV-90's sights is not available. In case it is of the same generation and capability as the thermal sight of the ODS variant of the Bradley, which is a first-generation thermal sight, then the CV-90 will also be able to detect a tank-like target at distances of 1 to 2 kilometers away at night. Both Bradley and CV-9040B can carry 7 troops, though CV-90 has a lower roof, so seating position in the Swedish vehicle is lower, with the soldier's legs having to intertwine. Both vehicles use diesel engines. While Bradley's is slightly more powerful at 600 horsepower, vehicle's power-to-weight ratio is below that of the CV-90. CV-90's transmission also has one more forward and one more reverse gear. 
the Swedish vehicle thus enjoys better acceleration and higher speed, especially in reverse, which could be helpful in bad tactical situations. CV90 uses tracks of the same width as the Bradley, but slightly longer. It also uses 7 road wheels, unlike Bradley 6 per track. Which means that on very soft soil CV90 does better, mobility-wise. Ground pressure figures corroborate that. Good mobility on snow was more important for Sweden than for the US Bradley. But that also means better mobility on mud, for example in southeastern Europe during the rainy seasons. Road autonomy is where A2 Bradley is better than 9040B. That stems from the doctrinal needs of the Swedish army, which didn't foresee long-range maneuvers against the Soviets on its home soil. So all these figures so far are valid for variants from the 1990s. But today US and Sweden are using different variants. CV90 got to a modernized C variant, also sometimes labeled as the E variant. On a battlefield, ODS Bradley would likely do better against tanks at long range and might do better in close quarters against infantry if it gets the add-on armor. CV9040B might do better as a support fire platform in general, offensively against fortified infantry at long ranges and pretty much against any vehicle that's not a tank. Though even there, if performing counter-attack, flanking maneuvers and supported by other armored vehicles, the CV9040 might do okay in some situations against tanks like T72 and T62. The US Bradley has of course been improved since the late 1990s. The M2A4 variant is the latest Bradley, in use since 2022, though based on various modifications that were fielded piecemeal since 2015. In short, the A4 Bradley's got new tracks, new suspension, new transmission, a larger engine and various new electronics. A lot of the changes stemmed from the fact older Bradleys picked up a lot of extra weight over the years, through modifications. With the new parts, A4 Bradley can handle additional armor easily, which was not always so readily applied to older Bradleys. Comparing the new Bradley with the newest CV90 can't really be done though, not to the standard of the previous variant comparison. Data for such modern versions is often classified. Newest produced CV90 is the MLU prototype for the Dutch Army, which is modernizing their older CV90s. The MLU stands for Midlife Upgrade. The Dutch are yet to actually receive the first vehicles. As said, both Bradley and CV90 received a more powerful power pack, but also went higher in weight. New CV90 comes with a 860 horsepower engine, while the Bradley's A4's new engine comes with 20% less horsepower. As a result, the CV90 has a much better power to weight ratio. A4's acceleration has suffered a little bit, even compared to A2. Fuel amount was increased drastically for the non Swedish CV90s, pushing its road autonomy above that of the Bradley, which, due to a more powerful engine, managed to even lose some reach compared to the earlier Bradley. The latest CV90 lost much of its ground pressure advantage over the new Bradley, with all the added protection and thus weight. But given that it still has one road wheel more per track, it should still do slightly better than Bradley on soft soils. Armor comparison is harder to establish. Bradley's hull was slightly modified and new Bradley reactive armor tiles of second generation now cover a greater total surface of the vehicle. It's very likely those offer even greater protection against shaped charge warheads, such as those in RPGs. They also offer some added protection against kinetic armor piercing rounds, but that improvement is usually smaller, relatively speaking. Some changes are also visible in baseline armor compared to the ODS variant, which is evident in weight difference, where the A4 is 20% heavier than the ODS even when both feature ERA armor tiles. The upgraded CV9035NL is a different beast. Firstly, it got a completely new turret and it is visible its armor is also featuring new and different looking modules. It's very plausible that the minimum armor levels of the MLU are equal to the C variant of the Swedish army. That variant came in the early 2000s and featured an up-armored turret and add-on armor modules for the hull. It was 5 tons heavier than the B variant. But it was also credited with being able to stop even 35mm rounds from the front, 
while its sides were good enough against 23 to 30 mm armored piercing rounds. While some of the added weight went towards a new engine, suspension and other systems, it's also likely the midlife upgrade design offers somewhat better armor protection than even the Swedish C model. As said, various CV90 users opted for smaller caliber guns. Netherlands went with the 35mm one and kept the said gun in the modernized turret as well. At the same time, many new systems were added to the turret. Some have brought the CV90 to parity with the A4 Bradley, and some went even further. Both vehicles got a second thermal sight, independently controlled by the commander. Thermal sensors inside have been upgraded to third generation ones, capable of classifying the exact model of a vehicle at over 10 kilometers away. CV90 sensor is peculiar in the sense it is mounted on an extendable mast. It can extend an additional half a meter over the turret which could come in handy in certain situations. Dutch CV-90 also comes with an active protection system, Israeli Iron Fist. It uses radars and infrared sensors to detect incoming projectiles and then fires interceptor chargers into their path. The same system was tested in the US during the last several years, but was deemed not effective enough as it intercepted 50% of incoming projectiles in US tests. But recently, the US said tests of newer variants of the system yielded a 70% interception rate and that the Army would like to install the systems on their Bradleys, come 2025. Though the funding for that has not yet been secured. Interception most likely addresses slower threats like RPGs and ATGMs, not tank gun projectiles. The 35mm gun still offers better performance than the 25mm one on the Bradley, though CV-90 still lags behind the Bradley in terms of overall rounds carried. The old CV-90-35 carried 70 ready-to-fire rounds in magazines and further 130 stored in the vehicle. The MLU specifications said the number of rounds carried increased by over 20%, while the ready magazine rounds increased by a dozen. The 35mm gun comes with some programmable fuse shells, though they seem to feature effects not quite comparable to 40mm ones, using cone-shaped blasts rather than a blast directed in all directions. The new turret also enabled the gun to be elevated higher than the 37 degrees of the old turret, by an undisclosed value. Perhaps the biggest addition to the new turret are anti-tank guided missiles. CV-90 now comes with two second-generation spike missiles, ready to launch with an unknown number of additional missiles stored inside the vehicle. The Spike 2 LR is newer and more capable than the tow missile on Bradley. It outranges it and doesn't need further guidance once it's fired. Its smart warhead can pinpoint the most vulnerable parts of vehicle targets and can perform top-down attacks where the enemy armor is thinnest. Given everything, the latest CV-90 variant seems to be beating the latest Bradley in most important tactical categories, though the Bradley still holds the edge in some, like the number of rounds carried, and may be a better choice in urban fights, with better main gun flexibility and its reactive armor tiles being better against RPGs, which are a big threat in urban surroundings. Its shorter reach missiles and worse mobility in mud are also less of a factor in urban areas, though going into cities with vehicles is always risky. Being over a decade older, the Bradley is more ripe for replacement, and the US Army is preparing its successor, as part of the OMFV program. It currently has five companies competing. Later this year, a down selection to three prototypes is planned. One of the OMFV candidates is a further redesigned CB90 model, weighing up to 50 tons. That's it for today. Our next feature video is likely to be about the Turkish fighter jet. Sorry about that. Turkey is becoming an aerospace power. As for Mr. Krabs' days in the Navy video that some of our community wanted, uh, we'd probably get shot down by Nickelodeon if we tried that. But a fun idea nevertheless. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.